Hello, and welcome to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast. Every week, Talking Heads will bring you in-depth insight and analysis through the lens of sustainability on the topics that matter to investors. In this episode, we'll be discussing upcoming MIFID II regulations. I'm Daniel Morris, Chief Market Strategist, and I'm delighted to be joined by Pierre Moulin, Global Head of Product and Strategic Marketing. Welcome, Pierre, and thanks for joining me. Hi, Daniel. My pleasure. If we think about the developments over the last decade and the, the rising interest over that period in ESG topics, uh, so that was already certainly a trend that we had been seeing, but the unusual events, if you will, over the last couple of years have just accelerated that process. Uh, we start with the pandemic, which raised awareness about the global challenges such as climate change that we all face. Uh, I think importantly, the response to the pandemic was almost as important. And by that, I mean, you had a real shift in the mentality of governments about what they were willing to do to address these global challenges. And in particular, very simply, to spend money. Because a lot of times when you would talk about uh, the challenges, say, like climate change, and then the sums that needed to be invested to address those challenges, a lot of people just thought they were so large and it was impossible. And, and we've realized, in, in some sense, uh, what we thought was impossible is now becoming possible and now hopefully can address more of those resources with that change in mentality towards addressing these challenges. Then we had the Ukraine conflict, which as a consequence, among other things, has raised awareness about energy security. And part of that is going to be an even greater emphasis on renewable energy. And then finally, uh, another consequence of the, of the conflict, or at least partly, has been this increase in inflation, which tends to increase inequality, so a focus on the S part of the ESG. So all of this certainly very, very supportive, and we have seen significant fund flows uh, into products that address exactly these challenges. But alongside that growth, really, it starts to call out for increased regulation, uh, given not only the, the interests of investors, but the need to, to protect them, uh, and also make sure that the communications are, are correct, if you will. So part of that are these new MIFID II regulations that are, are solely being um, implemented. So let's talk about that. Uh, Pierre, could you kind of tell us at a high level what exactly is MIFID II and kind of where are we on this regulatory journey? Yeah, sure, Daniel. Thanks, uh, thanks for this intro. Uh, and you are right to, to insist on, on the recent uh, context. It, it is indeed um, a very good illustration of, of the various dimensions that are implicitly uh, considered when talking about sustainable investing or EAG. Uh, COVID or the war in Ukraine, uh, as, as you said, shed the light on, on those important EAG factors. You can name those, huh? public health, ecosystem preservation, value chain consideration, as well as rising oil prices, but with also its uh, social implication. And this in view of the net zero imperatives uh, for climate, but this combined with now with the energy independence uh, through renewables, as you, as you said. So all that is about how EAG consideration and investment decisions influence each other. And this is uh, this is important, but also, uh, as you said as well, a source of confusion, confusion and, and, and uh, misunderstanding for, for the public at large. And this can lead in some cases to those kind of, you know, greenwashing, uh, accusations and other type of controversies. So from this perspective, the, the sustainable uh, regulation heavy agenda is, is proving very, uh, very topical. And before going directly into the, the MIFI2, let me uh, maybe recap a bit the, the three big components of this um, sustainable regulatory agenda uh, and maybe in the right order. First, you have the, the issuers, the, the corporates. They, they will have to, to report at some point in time precisely on several extra financial criteria. This will be uh, compulsory. And this falls under uh, the acronym, there are a lot of acronyms, CSRD. This stands for Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive. This will uh, definitely bring more uh, comprehensive, audited, and comparable set of ESG data for, for investors. Unfortunately, this will be due only in 2024 at best. 
So in the meantime, EAG data quality will remain a some form of weak, uh, weak spot, weak, weak point. So that's one. The second uh, wave of regulation is, is for investors, asset managers, so for PNP Paribas asset managers in particular. Uh, and we have, uh, and those asset managers have to digest uh, those uh, extra financial data that we were referring to, uh, and also the analysis that comes with them, and build uh, transparent uh, EAG uh, uh, financial products. This is now ruled uh, uh, in Europe under the so-called SFDR, another acronym, Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation, as you know. And this comes with the now quite well-known Article 8 and 9 uh, products, depending on whether you know, they, they promote EAG or have a sustainable investment uh, objective. All this, this in, in for, for asset manager, uh, this, all this is first and foremost about giving transparency to investors through detailed disclosures and reporting. The first wave happened last, last March in 2021, uh, last year, and there is a new wave uh, of SFDR expecting next year, Jan, where there would be a requirement in granular reporting on many EAG data points. So that's the second uh, dimension. And the third, and uh, maybe the, the more precise reason why we are talking today is um, is, uh, and it's happening now, it's MIFID 2, or it's a, a new steps in MIFID 2, um, where investors will be asked, starting in August this year, about their EAG preferences when investing. And this will be the, the duty of investment uh, product distributors to match those preferences with the relevant cocktail of EAG products, and this based on their uh, precise uh, disclosures. So as you see, this flow of regulation is coming a bit upside down. Uh, we could have expected corporate disclosure to come first and then uh, MIFID EAG preferences last. But uh, anyway, this is, uh, this is highly important. There will definitely be a transition period, no, no doubt about that. Actors will have to, to navigate this, this massive change. But ultimately, we see that as a potential positive revolution in, in the way uh, you know, investment products are, are distributed. So in summary, this flow of regulation is about putting back client at the heart of the process, giving them access to transparent information, and yeah, letting them speak their voice by being actor of their investment uh, decision. But by doing so, the intent of regulator is also, and this is very important, to prompt a real capital reallocation towards more sustainable economic activities and uh, as such to finance more easily all the transitions that needs to be navigated through. So I think we understand a bit better that fundamentally MIFID 2 is about uh, incorporating the desires, the wishes of investors when it comes to their investments and particularly their ESG oriented investments. Can you give us a little more detail at a concrete level exactly how that's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. So, so in order to assess those investor preferences for sustainability, uh, said distributors, as you said, uh, of those products must draw up a questionnaire to to determine investors' expectations uh, around those ESG criteria. So, the client will likely be asked the first question whether they want ESG factors to be to be taken into account when building their their investment portfolio. And the, if they say no, end of story. They will. I mean, everything will stop there and. Then, and with a uh, uh, two uh, questions and answers. If the answer is yes, which we think uh, will be the case for the vast majority of clients, then they will be asked more precise questions. Now, those questions will introduce three concepts, notions related to, in a sense, the, the impact, positive or negative, that their investment decision may have on the society at large. So on the first, on the positive impact side, uh, they will have to determine two, two things. One, to which extent they want their investments to, to be aligned with uh, the European taxonomy, green taxonomy. So maybe as a reminder, uh, this is a very prescriptive list of green activities that have been detailed by the regulator. It has been a long process, negotiation, expert with a very precise associated uh, KPI. So 
check center alignment with the European taxonomy on one hand, and the second hand for the positive impact, and what proportion of their portfolio has to be invested in the so-called sustainable investment, which is a, a more general description of activities, economic activities, that contribute to an environmental or social objective. So that's the two uh, precise questions on the positive uh, back side. And on the negative side, they will have to answer whether they want at least their investment to consider and address the potential negative externalities their investment may have, not to do significant harm, as, as it said in the regulation. And, and the regulator has selected a precise list of uh, 14, to be precise, even plus three uh, for, for sovereign investments, uh, 14 uh, compulsory uh, indicators, so-called uh, PASI, so what, what another acronym, PASI means a uh, principal adverse sustainable impact. And in this list, to be a bit more concrete, you'll find a kind of uh, indicator such as at the visual level uh, with the greenhouse gas emissions or the gender pay gap in a given, or the position diversity. So, um, since three, three, three notions will be uh, at the heart of the questionnaire, but you, as you can imagine, asking those questions uh, can be really seen as a, as a challenge. And this is a challenge. This is a pedagogic uh, challenge. Advisors in the, uh, in the distribution uh, organization will have to be trained to turn this into a, an inspiring conversation, while uh, also sticking to, to the steps the regulator wants this dialogue to, to respect. And so this is a trade-off to be fine. So one challenge about uh, pedagogy. And the other challenge is about uh, is uh, to, to turn those preferences into a concrete, then a customized portfolio. Huh? You have answers, you need to, to demonstrate that you have matched those answers. So they will use data and commitment given by asset managers on their product ESG characteristics on the so-called PASI system investment taxonomy. Select those and combine those products to actually match the AG preferences. And this on top of the other remaining risk and knowledge and experience uh, existing requirements in MIFID. So this is th those are the, the two big challenges ahead of the of the distributors. So it's a it's a game changer and uh, there is an ambitious change management exercise to be to be navigated through. I think we appreciate now much more how significant this regulation is uh, for companies that are going to have to report uh, on these different criteria for investors that need to really think hard about where they want their funds to go for the asset management industry that then has to incorporate those desires and implement it. And I guess ultimately, the real impact will be on the industries that then receive these funds with these ESG orientations. Let's focus a little bit more on the impact on the industry, if we can. Can you talk a little bit about what this will mean for the asset management industry more broadly, and then maybe a bit specifically on what BMP Paribas Asset Management is doing? Yeah, yeah, sure, Daniel. So, what what we can say, the asset management industry uh, in this, uh, I would say, framework has a definitely a, a critical uh, role to to play. Huh? This is a new paradigm for everyone, and in particular in in the context of greenwashing. Uh, there is an opportunity for the asset managers that are genuine in their in their commitment to sustainability to stand out and to make the difference. But to be honest, uh, there were and there are still significant changes. All that is about changes and opportunities to overcome before being able to offer relevant products to distributors and clients. So maybe let's go through those uh, those challenges. The first one, see, is uh, there is a massive data availability challenge and to overcome. I refer to, to, to that. But as you know, the, the European green taxonomy is, as we speak, incomplete. This is an ambitious uh, program, I would say, but only at this stage, two pillars out of the, the six are uh, so far granularly detailed. And those two pillars are about climate change uh, mitigation and adaptation. So the four others, uh, which about water and uh, marine activity, as well as ecosystems, circular economy and pollution, are still being defined. And there is also the intent to have a social taxonomy, uh, but uh, this has not even uh, kick-started. So, 
And on top of that, as, as mentioned earlier, the audited reporting uh, on taxonomy from corporate will be due only at best in 24. So for asset manager, committing and, uh, and, and reporting on this uh, taxonomy data is going to be uh, a bumpy road for the, for the at least a couple of years to come. So at BNP Paribas Asset Management on, on taxonomy, we are going to be uh, pragmatic and, and selective and will commit in uh, products with the relevant investment universe. Uh, and for equity in particular, uh, this will be in the field of sustainable thematics, Article 9 uh, type of strategies where, as you know, we have an extensive and, uh, and quite a leading offer. And on the fixed income side, we see uh, definitely the green bond as a as the relevant tool for for the alignment with taxonomy. If I insist on that, analyze with scrutiny, and with that you will have uh, those exposure and commitment to to taxonomy. So that's the the first uh, challenge about uh, data and taxonomy. Then there is a, a second uh, challenge which relates to the methodological challenge, if I may. As I, as I mentioned, the sustainable investment definition, uh, which is important in the questionnaire, uh, is, not, is, is not precisely uh, defined by the regulators. It's a quite large definition, leaving uh, room for, for interpretation by asset manager. So for asset manager, it has been, and it is a question of having devoted the right uh, resources uh, and commitment and focus to define precisely uh, what uh, this notion of being a sustainable investment at even down to the issuer level uh, can mean. And this in a uh, consistent and scalable manner, because you need to do that at the level of each and every uh, name holdings issuer, but then aggregate that. On. And all that based on as solid uh, data, again, uh, as, uh, as possible. So from the mythology definition to the actual exposition of portfolios down to uh, prospectus legal commitments, there is a, a massive journey provided that all of that has to be documented, duly controlled and reported upon. So big change. So at BNP Paribas Asset Management, uh, we have developed our proprietary definition. Uh, I think is quite uh, sophisticated and, and we have done uh, all those steps to come up with a strong and consistent commitment in all our Article 8 and 9 products of the SFDR, which, by the way, as you know, is, is the vast majority of our products, because, as you know, more than 80% of our open-ended funds, uh, AUM, are Article 8 and 9. So that was the second challenge about system investment definition and methodology and then uh, aggregation commitment. So the last challenge we see for asset manager relates to the complexity, uh, potential complexity of communicating commitments on the various so-called, you know, PASI, you know, principal sustainable adverse uh, impact. On those 14 mandatory, uh, we, it seems that some asset manager will be able to demonstrate that they consider and address some of them, but maybe not all. So this may also be varying from one product to another. So this may turn distributors' life in nightmare to deal with such a variety of, of situations. So, so on BNP Paribas Asset Management side, the good news is that we'll be both on, on PASI committed and simple. Uh, we have started long ago our sustainability journey, as, as you know. Early uh, 2019, uh, important milestones, we have made public our global sustainability uh, strategy. And this was including uh, demanding the AG integration rules with clear KPIs uh, based on our proprietary scores, be the ambition to beat the, the investment universe and the benchmark at each product level. And we have uh, then uh, turned that, uh, I would say, a, a binding commitment into our Article 8 and 9 products last March, uh, March last year in 2021. So we have gone even further than the just disclosure requirement of SFDR. But with this demanding uh, framework and all what it means in terms of exclusion, but also consideration of data and scores, uh, we are happy to tell, based on very documented and thorough analysis, to our clients that all those products, Article 8 and 9, will therefore be all PASI compliant. And this, we think, will simplify our clients' choices 
while, uh, as I said, being uh, very MIFID, uh, MIFID ready. So, in a nutshell, uh, if I may say so, MIFID DAG preferences is, is a game changer also for asset manager, even more than SFDR last year. We see a barrier to entry uh, to some extent building up uh, to now propose transparent and demanding EAG features in investment products. Uh, and strong, you know, the kind of strong marketing claims with little uh, actual content will be more and more difficult to this industry moving forward. So for BNP Paribas Asset Management, we see this as, a, as an opportunity to demonstrate our broad-based uh, commitment uh, to sustainability. We define ourselves as the sustainable investor for a changing world. And uh, these days we, we are doing all the necessary efforts in still an humble and, and committed way to, to, to prove it. Well, that, that I think was a big nutshell, but I appreciate that this is a very complex, uh, large, long-running a uh, piece of, of regulation. And of course, it's not just MIFID too, it's all the other bits. So thanks very much for trying to tease out kind of one of the really the key points. And if I can summarize those, uh, I think we've learned that fundamentally what MIFID two is about is giving power to investors to determine how they want their money to be directed you know, ac across the ESG spectrum. Uh, so certainly seems like a quite noble objective, kind of more concretely how that'll happen. There'll be a questionnaire and, and hopefully really a dialogue between the investors on one hand and the distributors and the intermediaries on the other. Uh, then the burden or the challenge really falls to the asset manager to ensure that those desires are, are properly and accurately reflected in the portfolios. Uh, but I think you made a key point uh, that this is a process and we're going to be going through a transition period as much as anything, simply because a lot of this regulation isn't isn't completely finalized. So I don't know, maybe we, sh we should plan a, a, a meeting in, in six months and you can update us on uh, what progress we've seen. Absolutely. With pleasure. Thanks again, Pierre, for sharing your expertise with us. That's it for this week's episode of Talking Heads. If you would like more information on MIFID II or other topics, please reach out to your BNP Paribas Asset Management contact or check out our Investors Corner blog. We recommend subscribing to Talking Heads on your favorite podcast channel. You receive your podcast episodes every Monday afternoon. If you like the podcasts, please leave us a positive review and a nice rating. You've been listening to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast with me, Daniel Morris, and Pierre Moulin. Please do join us next week, and until then, take care. This podcast presentation includes a discussion on current market events and is not intended as investment advice or an offer of products or services by BNP Paribas Asset Management. Please keep in mind that the information and analysis in this presentation is only current as of the publication date.